Hey again, how's it going? Today, I'm going to talk to you about death, which can be kind of a scary subject or maybe something you don't want to think about. I believe you should think about it, and I'm going to tell you why. Luke Perry died just the other day, and he was 52 years old. Apparently, a few days ago, he suffered a massive stroke, and then he was in the hospital, and he died in the hospital, never recovered. As far as I know, he never regained consciousness. And this is very close to me because in August of 2015, I had a stroke while I was driving an 18-wheeler at 70 miles an hour on the freeway, loaded. And luckily for me, I was talking to Rocket at the time, and she knew something was wrong with me, but she wasn't sure what. It Apparently, when I was speaking to her, she couldn't understand what I was saying. And what I was trying to tell her was my vision was weird. I couldn't point my eyes where I wanted them to go, and then I went to reach for something on the dashboard, and I'm like, nothing's happening. I looked down, my arm's just still sitting on my lap. So I'm always a hard charge. I want to keep going. And I guess that's what just autopilot. And I, I rolled up into the Wyoming port of entry. And I had all kinds of trouble trying to lock my... I almost laid down because I, I didn't feel very good. And my brain's like, no, you need to keep going. So I made it into the thing, the port of entry. And I was walking all sideways like I was drunk or something and when I get in there they knew something's wrong and they called the highway patrol and he came out and he's like uh sorry I have to do this but would you blow into the thing and I'm like yeah I get it and anyway I'm trying to talk to him and he puts me in his car take me over to my truck and I'm trying to talk to him I'm looking all weird and the ambulance guy he I heard him on the radio he says hey where's my ambulance and I could tell he was scared because he didn't know what was going on he just knew something was really wrong with me. And, well, once again, luckily for me, I was only 100 miles away from the best brain center in the western part of the United States. And it's Swiss Medical Center, something like that. And they, when they had me in the hospital before they put me on the helicopter, they're, they tell me they put this drug in me. I think it's called TSP. TSA, something like that. Anyway, it's a stroke drug. And they give it to you because it's supposed to thin out your blood and make clots go away. I remember asking them that she, she wanted me to sign. The nurse wanted me to sign a thing so that they could give, put it in my IV. And I'm like, what is it? <clears throat> do I need it? And she goes, yeah, just sign the thing. You, you really do need this. And I'm like, okay. And I'm laughing to myself because I'm thinking, hey, I ain't never going to be able to read this anyway. Hell, I can't read it. And so I signed the thing and they put that stuff in and I'm talking to some brain surgeon on the other, on the other end of a iPad on a stand and she's asked me about these pictures to look at and I'm all, I think I know what she's talking about but I have a very difficult time articulating what, what I'm looking at. So she tells him, yeah, bring him on down here. They threw me in a helicopter and I flew. And the, for me, the coolest thing about it was I had, I lost all emotion. I remember laying there thinking, flying through the air. I, go, oh, I hope I don't die. And then I thought, well, I guess if I did, I wouldn't know it anyway. And I just realized I wouldn't mind it because I'm not scared. I just had no feeling emotional. Anyway, I get down there and they check me out and they had a whole group of people there because it was different types of doctors and interns. And they did an interview again and threw me in an MRI and then put me in a room. And the doctor came in and he said, we think you had a stroke, but we're not sure because we didn't find anything in the initial MRI and <clears throat> right now you're at a a one on the scale of 
how how likely it is that that's what's happening and how bad a shape you're in i was like okay and he went on to explain when you were on the uh, the video conference with the uh. surgeon she said you were at a nine in other words number nine of yes you're having a stroke and it could be bad and by the time i landed i was at a three and he says i'm standing here talking to you you're at a one and we're not totally sure what happened because you recovered so quickly so we're going to keep you overnight and, and check you out do some more tests and everything and it was so funny because they kept asking me what day it is and i'm like i never know what day it is it's not a fair question <laughs> so who's the president and all this and anyway i recovered miraculously and it's weird because everyone told me this even the interns when they were coming to check my temperature or whatever they're like oh are you the truck driver and then they would just sit down and they would say well what happened what was it like what did you experience because they're all they've never seen anyone just fix get fixed and the one guy told me he said shoot they should hang your picture in the wall out there because you are the poster child for this drug and what it's supposed to do it worked perfectly and anyway after that you start thinking about what you're doing and what you what, what direction your life's headed and so on and you can't escape it and this is why i'm bringing this up because I don't care if you're 20 years old, understand, you're going to die. I think it was Marcus Aurelius, as a Roman emperor, had a guy, his whole job was just to follow him around and tell him, you are mortal, you are just a man. Because he would go over, he's worshipped by all these people, and he wanted to be, remember, I am just a man, I will die, this is all temporary. And the reason this is a good thing is because you have a sense of urgency about your life and what you want to accomplish so if there's something you're waiting for and you think there's time there might not be and you'll never know i thank god for the people that day that saved me because I have had a vision of what life would have been like where half my body was useless and I couldn't see with I you know try to move my eyes with my head and now I'm good but I don't know for how long and now I keep this in the back of my mind constantly that you never know what's going to happen and it's very important it gives you that sense of urgency for what you want to accomplish there's no day that you live unhappy you're in a bad relationship get the hell out you don't like your job do something else it doesn't matter what it is about your life that you've got to change but do it now because then It's the difference between living and waiting for something that is never going to happen because you didn't make it happen or understanding that someday it's all going to go away and you could have done this and you didn't. There's a book I just read about. It's called Can't Hurt Me. If I have mentioned it yet, you really should watch it or listen to it, read it however you can absorb this information and at the end he starts talking well shoot I don't know if I should ruin it anyway he, t he, he talks about God and his life and what he thinks of it and his picture is very close to mine and he figured you die and you're sitting there with God and he says his
sorry. It's a very close to me. Anyway, he's a, uh, he says a chart there in front of him. And you're looking at, he's pointed out to you and, and uh, you say, what's that? And God says, this is, this is a picture of what your life should have been and could have been. But you didn't, uh, you can see at different points, you didn't take this opportunity didn't take this job uh, you didn't go with this person here you didn't do this over here and had you taken different steps this is all what was supposed to be and then you're there like crap I thought there would be more time and then you realize he doesn't even have to tell you you realize you knew that there wasn't gonna be time forever and you still didn't do anything. And after thinking about what I wanna accomplish in my life, these different things I wanted to do and time gone by that might have been wasted. And you think how much you got left, it's time to get busy with whatever. I don't care what it is, whether it's losing weight or finishing your degree or getting out of a relationship that's not serving you or anybody else. Maybe it's things you wanna gain, maybe it's things you wanna let go. My message for today is whatever it is, just do it. Because you don't get to work doing what you're doing so that someday you can do what you want to do, you must begin doing what you want to do and continue doing it and make that work. That's the only way. And then, as I talked about yesterday, it's a day by day thing. And even if you don't accomplish what you're after, you die in the fight on the track, in the ring, whatever. So, live your life like you got something to do and you aim to accomplish it starting right now. Because you never know how long you got. Hopefully this was not too depressing. <laughs> but it should be an inspiration to you. Because it is to me. It is every day. And it's a much better way to live than just putting up with whatever it is that's uh, got you down. So get out there and change it, starting right now. That's all I got for today. I will talk to you tomorrow. I'm out.